Hey, JP here, and these are my top 10 tips for high altitude balloon flights. First, use a checklist. This is one of our checklists. Checklists are easy to make. Just list everything that you need to do for the flight. On launch morning, you're going to discover that your checklist is completely wrong, and that is fantastic. Because the next time, you'll have the notes from before, and you'll be able to change it, and it'll be a little less terrible, but still fantastic. By the time you get to your third checklist, you will be a well-oiled machine, and your launch process will be smooth. Number two. Make your rigging ahead of time. Okay, folks, this is not rigging. This is just a roll of string. Now, rigging is what attaches your balloon to your payload. Don't be out there cutting string, tying things on on flight morning. Make it ahead of time. Cut your line, tie your knots, put on your D-rings, your swivels, whatever it is you use in your rigging system, have it all done up ahead of time. Throw it in a plastic bag, put the mission number on it, and put it in your toolbox so it's ready to go on mission morning. It'll save you all kinds of time. Number three, run simulations of your flight. Now there's two kinds of simulations you'll want to run. One is a climb sim, it's how fast your balloon is going up, and the second is a flight sim where is it going to land? Now don't just run this one week before and call it a day. What you need to do is run nine sims. That's right, nine of them. One for the time you expect to launch. The second one for a half hour earlier than you expect to launch. The third one, this is one we most often use, for the half hour later than you expect to launch and then you run all three of them over again, but this time with your payload weight a half a pound lighter than you expect it to be. And then run all three of them over again with the payload weight a half a pound heavier than you expect it to be. Print them out, this is one of ours we print out, and have all nine of them with you on flight morning. You'll know which one you need to use the moment you lift off the ground. Now you want to do this as close as you can to flight time. I like to do it twice. I do all nine the night before, and then I read them all the morning of the flight. Number four, write up a weight budget. Now this is a list of everything the balloon is lifting and how much each thing weighs. Don't forget the rigging. I also add a lot of tape and a handful of quick ties because you know they're going to be added on flight morning. And then bring a scale and weigh your vehicle moments before launch. Weight is a, not a constant thing. You notice your weight is going to change all the time, even through the course of a morning. A quick tie here, a change of battery there. Know what your flight weight is. Number five. Measuring your helium. Over a decade ago, we used to fill our balloons like a lot of you do. We attach a weight to the balloon, add the helium, and when the weight floats, you're done. This is what we do now. We flow the helium through a natural gas meter and we measure it. Why go through all that trouble? Precision fill. Measuring the lift with a weight is not accurate. A little bit of wind throws it off. A little wind above the balloon creates lift, lifting your balloon artificially. A little bit of weight lower on the balloon pulls it down. You just can't get a truly accurate weight. Metering your helium gives you a precision fill. A precision fill gives you an accurate sim, and an accurate sim means your vehicle is going to land exactly where you expect it to. And besides, weighing your balloon is hard. Even somebody walking by creeps, wants the balloon to wiggle and wobble around. Metering your helium makes the whole process easy. 
it can cost up to $400 for the meter, depending on the size, or for free if you're willing to use a used meter. It is totally worth it. Number six, separate balloon fill and payload toolboxes. You know, launch teams tend to form into two groups. You have a balloon team and you have the payload team. Get each team their own toolbox. Trust me, if each team has their own roll of tape and their own pair of scissors, you will live a happier life. Number seven, measure the wind. Get an inexpensive wind meter like this one. A week before your flight, start carrying it around. Pull it out a few times a day and measure the wind. Guess what the wind is going to be and give it a try. You're going to be surprised at how often you're wrong. On launch morning, measure the wind and write it down on your checklist. After a while, you'll get to know what is an acceptable wind for flight and what is not. Be your team's wind guru. Number eight, get a paperwork file box. You have SIMS, you have your checklist, you've typed up your NOTAM, you have a weight budget, maybe even a team phone list. You're starting to get a real pile of paperwork. Get yourself a little to-go file box. Make it your mission briefcase so all your paperwork is there and organized. Turn your paperwork from your enemy into your ally. Now, you can't avoid your paperwork, so make it your superpower. But that's a video for another day. And you get extra points if you make copies of all your paperwork and give it to someone else who's going to be at the mission. Even paperwork needs a backup. Number nine, put on the brakes. On your checklist, create two stopping points during your launch. A team meeting at the beginning and a pause just before takeoff. You know, it's easy in the excitement of the launch to get all rushed. Take control over your pacing. You do this with about a four minute team meeting at the beginning, get everyone on the same page, and a two minute stop just before liftoff, where everyone takes a deep breath, have the whole team look at the vehicle and look at the balloon. You'll be amazed at the things that you discover that you've missed. And it also creates a calmer, more relaxed, and more professional launch. Number 10, assign a team photographer. You ever have this happen? At launch, everybody and his brother has their phone out filming the launch, but nobody gets the shot you're looking for. Well, it's because you can't be releasing the balloons and taking pictures at the same time. Have one person dedicated to taking the pictures and have them start out right when you get to the launch site and document the whole thing. And that gives you the advantage of afterwards, when you're trying to figure out how you did something, you'll have the pics to help you remember. Number 11, whoa, say, this is a top 10 list. What's this 11 business? Well, think of it as a bonus tip. It is also the most important. Be ready to call it off. If you are not ready to abort, then you're not ready to fly. You'd be surprised at how hard it is to call it off after all the effort everyone's put, in, put into it. Be ready to make that decision if you have to. I've seen multi-million dollar programs get go fever and plow through when they shouldn't. Sometimes they fail, or worse, they succeed by the skin of their teeth. Worse, because it gives them the false sense of security that it's okay to do it that way. And then the next time, somebody gets hurt. This is so incredibly common, there needs to be an acronym for it. Don't fall into that trap. Better to come back another day. Well, that's it. You know, there's a thousand ways to fly a high altitude balloon. These are just a few of the things that work for us, and I hope they work for you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and a big thank you to all our patrons out there that support us on Patreon. Okay, till next time, take care.